Welcome to Bridging Chicago, a podcast that aims to connect our listeners to Chicago's business, community, cultural, and charity leaders. Brought to you by SATC Solution Center L3C. Hello, and thank you for listening to another episode of Bridging Chicago. I'm Savannah, one of the law clerks here at SATC. And sitting with me today, Priya Shah has joined us. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Um, Priya is the founder and executive director of The Simple Good and has also been listed on the Forbes 30 Under 30 list. But we're going to, you know, start a little bit sooner than that, as we do. So sort of the first question I ever ask anybody is I sort of, I've done some background research and I saw that you went to the University of Illinois. Mm -hmm. So are you like a Chicago area native? Yeah, I grew up right outside the city in Oak Park. Okay, um, great. So I've always been in the area. I grew up being in and out of the city. Yeah. Um, just because that's what Oak Parkers do. Yeah, so. Oak Park <laughs> is a good location to be able to, like, you're not necessarily, mm-hmm. like, in the city all the time, but really easy access yeah, to the city. Yeah, exactly. That green line was, like, our best friend. Yeah. It was awesome. <laughs> um, and so I saw that while you were there, you got a bachelor's in accounting and finance. Mm-hmm. And that's not, <laughs> like, necessarily directly related to the, like, artists, the uh, collaboration work that you do now. So why accounting and finance? Were you always thinking? I know a lot of people who are sort of in nonprofits get business degrees, um, mm-hmm. like thinking about that ahead of time. Was yeah. that what you're doing? Or, yeah, yeah, pretty much. I did a lot of volunteer work internationally. So I um, worked in slums in India and South Africa. I worked at Mother Teresa's Orphanage. I worked oh. in Brazil. Mm-hmm. And a lot of that was in communities where there was a lot of poverty. Um, and the work I was doing was around empowerment and, you know, working with young um, people that were lived in those environments. And a lot of the programming was very successful, but I always saw that it would kind of stop eventually because Mm -hmm. there wasn't enough funding or there was some issues around like how the organization was managed and there was such a huge gap between the business and social sector and I didn't think it made any sense Mm -hmm. and so you know when you travel around the world and you go to these areas you realize how much of a privilege it is to be able to go to university and to be expected to go to university and so I grew up as actually an artist Mm -hmm. and I decided to go to business school because I wanted to bring those worlds together I didn't know how I was going to do it when I decided to take on my major but that's all that was always something in the back of my mind yeah that's what I saw that um you also did some study abroad in Mm -hmm. Istanbul and in um South Africa which are not like typical study abroad locations (laughs) and so I was sort of thinking that you seem to have like a long-term goal of wanting to empower these communities that have been through a lot of struggle yeah exactly and I always really pick places that would give me some sort of culture shock Mm -hmm. you know I think like that's really how you understand the world is by challenging yourself about like how do I really connect to things that seem different and when you do that you realize how actually similar all these places that I went to were. They were very similar in terms of, like, how people lived and how they mixed with each other and their cultural vibrancy. Mm -hmm. Um, It just took in a different, like, form, and I thought it was also beautiful. Yeah, I think that's great. So while you were at the University of Illinois at the business school, Mm -hmm. were most of the other students you were with just, like, white men? (laughs) (laughs) It wasn't that diverse. No, Yeah. yeah. So what was it like for you, like, out here being like, I'm trying to get this accounting degree so Mm -hmm. that I can help you know I've got this long-term goal of helping these diverse communities how was it to deal with like these other students that I'm assuming didn't have that outlook yeah it was interesting because you know I grew up in Oak Park as a very diverse community so Mm -hmm. I was always just regularly interacting with people that were different than me not really thinking about it Mm -hmm. when you get to college you realize like communities are just not like that and so people operate within what they're used to and in the business school it was the same type of sort Mm -hmm. of dynamic like people really didn't integrate with each other and it wasn't like always a conscious thing either but to me it stood out and I always thought that was a a problem because when we do work right in the real world you work with so many different types of people so if we're not doing that in college how do we how's this really work (laughs) so I actually started um this big conference in my university called uh, the Business Diversity Conference, and it was really focused on understanding diversity and inclusion in the Mm -hmm. workplace and the benefits of it, and that brought a lot of students at the college to come together and understand different ideas of diversity and, you know, how that 
they could actually interact with each other. And all the companies I brought in, I challenged them to say, like, you, you're not here to talk to these kids. You have to interact with them. Like, yeah. create something interactive that can teach them about this. And it was really cool because it grew so big. Now it, like, lives without me. Like, it's still Oh, that's there. great. So they're still doing that. Yeah. Because I feel like, you know, this topic of understanding diversity and cultures or something that you need to learn when you're in school, not, yeah. you know, afterwards. I feel like you were sort of ahead of the curve on that. Like, <laughs> I know so many uh, programs, like, at law school, we have so many now. They're, like, have to have our div- diversity, <laughs> like, uh, seminars and stuff. Oh, but, really? Yeah. Oh, but Because the law field is. Yeah. Right now, more women are getting law degrees, but still way more men are, like, partners and things like that. And so they're and now they're like, oh, finally we see there's a problem. I'm like, okay, well, it's 2019. Yeah. We've had a problem for a while. <laughs> it's been but, a while. So you're definitely ahead of the curve on that. Thank you. Um, so then after you graduated, it looks like you had a couple of jobs like in the accounting field. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know, so tell me what that was like as well. Just yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, when you go to business school, as with anything, they kind of get you on this path. Um and I ended up working at Ernst & Young for mm-hmm. some years. Um, but, you know, I, I'm, and then I ended up moving to Groupon because I mm-hmm. needed something yeah. more creative. Um, it was a big, hot startup at that time, so it was a cool opportunity. But I actually started The Simple Good while I was at Ernst & Young. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I saw that um, you started the blog right around um, 2011 mm-hmm. when you were at Ernst & Young, and then you transitioned to Groupon. Yeah. It was, like, shortly after that. And um, so... What was your original thought into starting The Simple Good? I know it started as a blog. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I went into kind of the corporate path to really understand Mm -hmm. business and gain those skill sets of understanding, like, how do you, you know, successfully set things up Mm -hmm. and be professional? I think I gained a lot of things from that. Um, But it wasn't what my original goal was, I realized, and I, I I realized that I couldn't get to this larger impact that I really wanted mm-hmm. through the firm. Um, and I ended up starting this blog kind of as a need of an outlet to like get these realizations out of me. This cre- I needed that creativity mm-hmm. yeah. back out there. Um, and it was really just kind of a, a kind of a understanding of this of all the travels that I've had and interacting with so many different types of people that were, you know, from you know slums to diplomats to world leaders and understanding this universality of humanity and how I was able to connect with all these people. And it was all really connected under this fundamental element of goodness in our lives, right? Mm -hmm. We all worried about the same things. We all cried about the same things, but good was the same to all of us. And that's how we really connect as human beings. And um, I felt like we never talk about that, right? Right. We only talk about the bad things. Right, yeah, it's so easy to be online and just be like, look at like this list of terrible things that's constantly refreshing with new terrible things. Yeah, exactly. And find ways to separate each other Mm -hmm, from each other. But that's really not like inherently what humans are meant to do. If you look at the history of the world, we're meant to like move and collaborate and bring together ideas. Like that's what our function is. And by dividing each other, we actually um, stunt our development, right? And how what Mm -hmm. we're able to create in this world. But we don't talk about that. And I felt like I needed to just get that out there. So I created this blog called The Simple Good. Mm -hmm. And it was like kind of over with discussion with friends and we put together 54 photos of our travels and different simple good moments that we witnessed when Mm -hmm. we're around the world. And you realize like all those moments, even though they're unique to the place, they're all the same, right? It's like a sunrise, like somebody doing an act of kindness, like a meaningful interaction. Like Mm -hmm. those are things that happen everywhere you go. Yeah, things that people can like immediately relate to. Yeah, and it immediately triggers some positive feeling. Yeah, it makes you like remember other good things that have happened to you or just like feel better seeing that even if you're having a bad day, mm-hmm. like somebody else is doing something good. Right, exactly. Yeah, it it uplifts all of right. us, right? No matter where we're from or what language we speak or what we pray mm-hmm. to. And um, so I just kind of put that together and then I invited people to submit your own, just kind of needing that creative outlet again. Yeah. And then we got all these submissions almost like over a week it went viral. Wow. And so everybody was like, you know, submitting their photos, sharing their stories, and um, people are even writing to us saying, you know, thank you for doing this. This is really what we need to connect on. And there was a a, a newspaper in Italy that wrote about us, like, you can share your, like, small moments of good. You should submit. So we started getting all these photos from there. Yeah. 
And it was just a beautiful thing to see that people are willing to be vulnerable for a sm- about their small instance in life in order mm-hmm. to connect to other people. And it just shows you how we are really interested in each other. Yeah. Because people would spend hours on the blog just looking at all these photos and reading stories. Yeah. And it would just almost be kind of like a medicine to them. Yeah. You know? I think it really like shows how much like this was needed mm-hmm. by how quickly it like went viral and how yeah. people were just like yeah. um, immediately attracted to mm-hmm. it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, but you were still at Groupon for like three more years while you're doing this. So what was it like for you to balance like this new um, artistic endeavor that is basically exploding? And I'm sure that's not what you like thought would happen immediately while you still have, you know, this like business job. Yeah. I mean, it it ended up being even bigger because I took the blog and, you know, brought it to students on the South side and we created a art program around it which is now what we do and so I was balancing the blog this art program and work (laughs) for a little bit but I don't know I it it didn't seem like work to me because I was yeah when it's something that you like Mm -hmm. like doing it's like a lot easier to make time for yeah and it was something that I knew was needed you Mm -hmm. know like the reason why I wanted kids to be involved in it was because in Chicago just because you're born in a certain community you're stigmatized as being Mm -hmm. negative and I wanted those students to have voices and a platform to speak about what's positive and understand that they have a simple good like they Mm -hmm. also experience these things and so we can't just disregard them you know and so and it was really powerful to see you know them even speaking about their simple good because you realize that it was allowing them to go through this process of cope and healing Mm -hmm. for a lot of negative things that have, have happened to them um you know in their lives which was really crazy because you know when I was traveling I, you know, I was at the orphanage and kids had gone through so much within their short period of time in this world and they were still able to be resilient. Mm-hmm. And the reason why was because they had this ability to appreciate the little things and see beauty in other people and within themselves and hold on to that as their strength. And when you're not taught that as a value, right. it's very hard for you to overcome, mm-hmm. right? And so when I was able to kind of bring that same sort of value of appreciating the little things through the blog to their kids here in Chicago, the same thing happened to them. Yeah, right? I was reading sort of like... Um, I don't know if they're like necessarily like testimonials, but Mm -hmm. about um, the art projects that you guys do from the website. And so was that something that the arts programs, was that something you started like almost immediately after the blog or? Yeah, it took, I was um, a couple years after the blog. So in 2014 was when we did our first art program. And um, it was a six week program at that time. Mm -hmm. Um, We collaborated with a teacher at a school um, in Auburn Gresham. And um, it was just so powerful to see like how the students' behavior had changed for within a short period of time, just because you're surrounding them with different notions of positivity and examples of resilience around the world. Mm -hmm. Um, And they were able to also observe that within themselves and in their community. So, and bring that back into the classroom, right? So like they'll observe something outside of like an act of kindness out like going home and they'll talk about that in the right. classroom yeah yeah and it changes the way you perceive the world and mm-hmm. then it changes the way you make decisions right mm-hmm. because you realize like oh there is hope you know there is goodness out there yeah I need to be a part of that mm-hmm. um and so from there um you know the program grew we were able to formalize it and it was very organic like teachers were telling each other about the program like oh you have to bring this program to your kids and it was at one point when I was at group on and this is when I knew that I had to make a decision about (laughs) what is next in my life um we had 200 kids doing a simple good uh program um while I was doing this part time, <laughs> I was like, yeah. "Oh my God, what am I doing?" Yeah, so yeah. then you're sort of like, "This can't be like a part time job anymore. Yeah. I need to, I need to figure it yeah. out." Yeah, and it just kind of happened where it was just kind of a sudden decision, really. You know, really? a lot of people <laughs> ask me like, "How do you prepare for it, or how do you make the jump?" And it's like very hard, yeah. you know, because it's a you are getting rid of something that you're very much used to, mm-hmm. but you also need to make time for something that could be a risk. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I, I just, it was just a very sudden thing where I'm like, okay. Yeah, I feel like sometimes, like, eventually you're just like, I just have to yeah, make the jump. Like, exactly. I just gotta do it. Yeah. So, it's yeah. just something in your head that's just like, you know what, it has to be now because if it isn't, then when am I gonna do it? Yeah. And yeah, so that's kind of how it happened. Nothing like <laughs> mind blowing. <laughs> yeah, there's anything. no like sudden realization, like, yeah. you have to get out or. Yeah. yeah. But, um, and I saw that Groupon is still like, 
sort of a partner and they're engaged in like helping or like um, partnership or I can't think of words right now. <laughs> I like... I, yeah, I, well, I've done some initiatives with them when I was working there. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was cool to be able to bring the simple good yeah. into some of the initiatives that they were trying to do to engage the community. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and through that, you know, we were able to also show the community like kind of more of our, what we were able to do. And so I still work with the community around. Yeah. Group, um, so I saw that you had a lot of Chicago based um, sort of sponsors, different companies throughout Chicago uh, like to be involved. Mm-hmm. Um, I saw that the chop shop was listed on your yeah. thing, which is like one of my favorite music venues oh, to go to. Awesome. In the city. You should come to our fundraiser. Yeah. We always do our fundraiser there um, in September. So this year will be September 12th. But my first Simple Good event, like big fundraiser, was at Chop Shop. And they've been so supportive since the very beginning. Yeah. Um, and they're, the owners are pretty good friends of mine. And then it's just, like, so wonderful that they have seen it the organization grow yeah. because they were so supportive of it from the very beginning and it was simply because they really believed in the mission. Yeah, that's great. Um, it made me feel good to see like different Chicago organizations that I already liked and they were like, oh, I was yeah. like, oh, good to see that they're <laughs> sort of involved in this too. So that's good. Um, and then I saw that you're also um, a documentary is being <laughs> <laughs> made right now yeah. about you bringing uh, the simple good to, is it Rwanda mm-hmm. and... Uganda and Uganda yeah and so and you're a producer on that yeah. and so what is that like I'm <laughs> sure business school does not prepare you to like be a producer on a documentary that also sort of is featuring yourself yeah. as well yeah it's been a little challenging um but you know I think I always do encourage business because it allows you to understand how to organize things mm-hmm. and understand like why revenue is so important, you know, in order to make things so sustainable. So I've been able for us to even create our budget for the film and yeah. like make sure we're tracking things and our expenses and making sure we have opportunities to apply for the grants and stuff like yeah. that, which are so needed for film. Film is such a long process. Mm-hmm. Um, and I understand why people go through this long, excruciating process because it really is rewarding to be able to storytell in such a powerful mm-hmm. way that like really does impact people when they yeah. watch it. Like think about a film that you mm-hmm. watch and it stays with you like forever, right? Mm-hmm. And so that's why people really invest all this time. Yeah. So it's been interesting to explore this new world. Yeah. But um, I guess it is sort of just like a continuation of like instead of just like one picture of the simple good, now you have like <laughs> you know thousands of pictures together to make a documentary. That's about a good it. point. Yeah. yeah. No, for sure so that it, other end of the spectrum for your <laughs> blog <laughs> yeah no it's been really cool and we've been able to partner with our like organizations that have always been working with us mm-hmm. at heart of a thousand hills and our new program partner in uganda which is mm-hmm. yell red and they work with they are formerly abducted child soldiers that are reintegrating new abduct um uh, new uh, participants are coming in and need healing and trauma through the arts. So it's been so cool to be able to make these partners in the region in order to really help grow the message of the simple good. And they both really believe in like the mission. So I think that's been such a beautiful thing about all of this is that it's not just a thing for Chicago, you know, everybody yeah. has really ma- took it, taken it and mm-hmm. made it their own. Yeah, it's great that, especially because, like, with everything online and it's just, like, just sharing a picture, mm-hmm. yeah, you can do this from anywhere. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, everybody wants to hear your story, mm-hmm. you know? People yeah. really uh, want to hear about their simple good. When is there ever a day they're like, nah, yeah. I don't want to hear about right. your dick. Yeah, or <laughs> it's like, no, I don't want to hear anything good. Yeah, yeah exactly. Especially it's like, I feel like every news feed I see is just full of people being angry. Yeah, and like, totally. yeah, I'm going to have to like definitely follow you on everything Please so I can do. get some yes. like slightly more uplifting And people things say on my that feed. to us. They'll message us and they're like, you know, you literally are my daily source of inspiration because it's like a reminder of positivity mm-hmm. that's coming in. And a lot of those um, inspiration sources are our kids because we're sharing their stories and their mm-hmm. um, artwork and their simple goods. And it's just a, that's their simple power too. You know, I yeah. want to like elevate their voices and say like, you know, don't write off these kids just because you know, they may be from a different neighborhood or come from a different story. Like mm-hmm. everybody has their own individual power that can impact other people. Yeah. So before we started recording, we were talking a little bit about mm-hmm. other programming that mm-hmm. you've been able to do. So just tell us about um, some other things you've been doing. Yeah. Um, so we are working with the Annex um, to launch this 
campaign, the Uplift Women, so mm-hmm. it's like a women's empowerment street photography campaign called Uplift Us Chicago. And so this was an idea that I had like for years now, um, since like the Me Too movement came yeah. out. And now it's finally taking off, which I'm really excited yeah, about. But great. I really felt like, you know, during that movement when this whole movement of women really stepping up, mm-hmm. um, there hasn't been a place for men to ask questions and for us to have really have like a productive dialogue and to just keep like for us to just like, you know, be understanding of each other. Yeah. You know, unfortunately, this oppressive way of how women have been treated has been going on for thousands of years. Yeah. <laughs> and like, uh I think the only way we can truly have understanding and show solidarity for each other is by understanding what are we really going through and Mm -hmm. what might be some of the biases that I don't see that you might be hurting from and just having a safe space to talk about that and then allowing men to really understand like this is how you can support us yeah and so what the campaign does is have um we've reached out to different community organizations and we're going to open it up to the public to nominate a woman that brings the simple good of chicago um to their community and this isn't like an influencer or a ceo like i don't want to see myself nominated (laughs) like I want, like, the everyday woman Mm -hmm. um, that's represented here, you know, because we all have, like, an everyday power that we really do bring to communities, and that should be celebrated. Mm -hmm. You know, it it could be the woman on the corner selling the elotes, or it could be, you know, the woman in, you know, our lobby that's just always greeting us in a warm way. Mm -hmm. Like, that's an important thing. Yeah. And nominating those women and, you know, acknowledging them, and we're going to take... portraits of them and Mm -hmm. then they will be uh we pasted onto walls across the city all by men male allies that have gone through this workshop um that talk about like what does it really mean to empower women and support women and then at the end we'll do like a reception to celebrate both sides you know yeah no i'm really excited to see the city covered in like portraits of women (laughs) i'm always ready to just like shout about uh feminist causes (laughs) that people are doing in chicago so i was really excited to hear that you're doing that Um, yeah um and so then I also saw uh, you guys have a really exciting fundraiser coming up in June um the hunt for good urban art fundraiser Mm -hmm. so um tell me a little bit more about that yeah so this is our fourth year doing it it's so much fun um it's basically like a street art scavenger hunt so Chicago has so many amazing murals um different art finds by a lot of international artists Mm -hmm. that are pretty famous that we don't really even know about yeah um and so this is kind of a hunt for our the simple good so it's a three-hour scavenger hunt you get clues to go to all these different communities in the city um, including downtown yeah. and find like these little gems mm-hmm. and the, it's all through Instagram so you find them you post it on Instagram we'll score it and the teams with the most points by the end of the three hours um, get Deem Hunt for Good Champions uh, 2019. Great. And um, we do like a celebration in the after party. So it's grown so much. Last year we had about 150 people participate. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And this year, hoping for more. Um, the registration deadline ends May 20th. So okay. And we're hoping that we can get final registrations in. Um, but I all support our youth art programs here um, in Chicago as well as internationally. Okay, great. Yeah, I think... I'm going to sign up for that because Please I, yes. um, like whenever I'm on the train, I love looking out and seeing all the street art. Yeah. And so like the opportunity to like actually go explore some more of it, mm-hmm. um, is really exciting to me. So I yeah. Think I'm and sometimes that. you could even um, meet the artists cause that will ask them to come by. And so you get to actually see who they, who's creating all this stuff. So and they're so friends fun. of the organization. Yeah. So they're always down to support. We have some amazing artists yeah. that help us out. So um, another thing we always ask, because we're looking, you know, Chicago business leaders um, hoping to inspire other younger people to get involved, join industry and stuff. So what advice would you give someone who's sort of, you know, starting out, maybe wants to start a nonprofit or something like that? What advice would you give them? Um, I would always say that, you know, like, I think a lot of people want to start nonprofits. And I always say, like, test out your idea first like mm-hmm. do a pilot um see what's already out there too and work with um the resources that are available so when i mm-hmm. first 
you know, started getting into kind of the nonprofit scene. I was doing a lot of volunteer work just mm-hmm. to seeing what yeah. people were doing, what might be missing, or maybe mm-hmm. what wasn't missing. You know, sometimes yeah. we think that we know it all, but you don't until right. you actually go <laughs> in and see it. Yeah, you don't know what you don't know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I always say get involved with the community. And then uh, I think business is very important in order for you to, like, navigate the lay of the land mm-hmm. for this. You know, we're, we try to be as self-sustainable as possible, but you have to also understand, like, you know, what are the resources available to support yeah, you? What so. are the resources? Yeah, when you were talking about like balance sheets and mm-hmm. like um, grant funding and stuff, yeah. I think it's just important to have sort of basic knowledge and not just like a good idea. Yeah, you know? no, for sure. Exactly. Like, jump in on that and mm-hmm. then, you know, figure it out. It's a, it's a different world, you know, when you, especially I came from corporate, right? So mm-hmm. like, you don't have grant applications right. over there. <laughs> That's a yeah, different. Groupon's not looking yeah. for any grant funding. <laughs> no, they have different ways of going about it. And it's a different language, too. Mm-hmm. So um, I always say dabble in everything before we jump into it, because sometimes, you know, the things that you think aren't there are already really there. Yeah, so. or like things you do like you might think you have a great idea but then realize that that's not even like possible like yeah. that idea would not work yeah but. or maybe even the community doesn't need it right. you know what I mean that's like another thing is really invest in the community that you're trying to mm-hmm. impact so if you don't actually go into the community right. and see what they have how can you say that this is a need you know so yeah I love seeing that you have always like done a lot of work in the communities that mm-hmm. you're um, working with as well because you do see a lot of people that are like, I have this great idea. And then they get, try to, they're like, I'm going to go in and like fix this community. And you're like, that's actually not what not, you should be doing. Right. You want to work with them and see what they need rather than mm-hmm. tell them what they need. Right, exactly. Actually, we worked with um, Northwestern Law School um, yeah. a few years ago. And they wanted to do one of our showcases. Mm-hmm. And I talked to one of the directors. I'm like, actually, law students should really understand art. Mm-hmm. And he was like, what? Why? I'm like, because that's really how you hear voices of the community and like what is their stories that they're telling Mm -hmm. you in order to understand them better you know sometimes you can't always be in the you know the grits of everything but if you understand like the voices and the stories that they're telling you and sometimes it's conveyed through art you can really understand what the need is you know Mm -hmm. in terms of defending them and understanding their um their backgrounds yeah yeah that's great so um, unless there's anything in our conversation that you think I've missed mm-hmm. that you wanted to bring up, I think that about wraps it up. Yeah. Totally. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks I really loved hearing me. more about The Simple Good. Oh, thanks for having me. I appreciate you guys. Yeah. You guys are awesome. Thanks for listening to this episode of Bridging Chicago as produced by the SATC Solution Center. As always, feel free to reach out to us on social media with your comments and suggestions. You can email us at solutioncenter at satcltd.com. Find us on Twitter and Instagram, where our handle is at Bridging Chicago. And don't forget to rate, subscribe, and comment on iTunes, SoundCloud, or wherever you listen to this podcast. Nothing contained in this podcast shall constitute financial, investment, legal, and or professional advice. No professional relationship of any kind is created between you and the podcast host or guests. You are urged to speak with your financial, investment, or legal advisors before making any investment or legal decisions. Furthermore, the opinions expressed in this podcast are not necessarily the opinions of the SATC Solutions Center, Shank Annis Tepper Campbell, or any of its employees. This podcast is created by the host and guests' individual capacities. All opinions on this podcast are or have been rendered based on specific facts under certain conditions and are subject to certain assumptions and may not and should not be used or relied upon for any other purpose, including but not limited to or use in or in connection with any investment purposes or legal proceeding. 